Ja, ja. Have you have you done stuff here? Yeah, I'm with the thing, so I'll just you know. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Mr. Charles. I thought when you said it's gonna look I thought you thought something. Yeah, yeah, no, we're on with Charles Blue Fist and Tolson, so we've we been heavily involved since 2014. And are they gonna replicate it? Yeah. We're replicating yeah. it. Yeah. We're taking mouldings of a lot of it. Yeah. So that it'll be restored to the years. Yeah. Well, if you said it the right theatre industry that we are working. Um, well, first of all, I, I'd just like to say a little personal note in a way that isn't life circular so very often. Uh, some of you might know um, I did a lot of my early theatre work in Newcastle and hearing Simon talk about the front of house spaces here, I'm minded of how successful they were. They, in fact, they were so successful that in 1837, Benjamin Green stole Wyatt's design and took it and rebuilt it at the Theatre Royal in Newcastle. <laughs> Uh, and, and little bits of that even survive here. And also the fact that um, Augustus Harris, the great uh, spectacle manager of, of Drury Lane in the late 1890s, um, loved Newcastle so much that he took out a lease on the Tyne Theatre and Opera House and sent his pantomimes, which had been staged here, up to Newcastle the following, following year. Um, and for that reason, we have fantastic record in some ways of what was actually staged in Newcastle because, of course, all these fantastic pantomimes that Harris put on here are so wonderfully illustrated in all the illustrated papers of the period. But I've had a great week, my goodness me. Um, what an absolute honour and a privilege to be able to come here uh, and play like a kid with a massive train set all week. <laughs> I mean, you know, just absolutely fantastic. And we've talked about this. I first came into this theatre in the late 1970s um, and uh, met um, George Sinclair, who was then the stage manager at Drury Lane. Uh, Becky, his daughter, 
works on stage door here. Yeah. And it's a real family, family thing in many ways. And it, it reminded me of coming back here this week. What a fantastic team effort it's been uh, by all the staff here and everybody working here to, to get it to where uh, we are this morning. So I'd like to make a personal thanks, first of all, to everybody who's contributed to today. So perhaps you can just... Um, and so to the stage machinery itself. Well, what, what, what an extraordinary building this is. Uh, as Simon said, it's gone through so many different iterations over the years. Um, and the interesting thing in, in, in respect to the stage machinery is in fact that, of course, this auditorium it, it was not designed for that stage house in the sense that the stage house precedes it. So the relationship um, it is slightly unusual and of course the machinery is put in when the building auditorium was in this space itself. Um, why was it uh, changed in the late 1890s? Well, a number of reasons. Um, it's no secret that um, our theatres were death traps in the 1880s and 1890s. Um, the illustrated papers of the period uh, it, uh, amply illustrate the problem that was uh, common throughout uh, the world, not just, not just Britain, of course, the use of gaslighting was, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty, pretty crazy concept when you think about it. I know what we'll do, we'll put unprotected gas flames next to scenic canvas that's not fire rated, <laughs> and we'll build the scenery out of wood as well, and there's a lot of air, oxygen circulation, and I know what we'll do, we'll get some limelight, which is based on oxygen and hydrogen, <laughs> And we'll set that on fire. Um, and so, as a result of that, there were a lot of, lot of problems uh, in, in the theatre industry at that time. If you were a theatre architect, my goodness me, what a great time to be building. Because, they, you know, there was a new job every week. It, it's just fantastic. It's like a massive job creation scheme. But um, times had to change, and Harris recognised that. Um, Drury Alanis, as of course he's often referred to, uh, the, the memorial to him uh, standing at the front of the theatre, um, he, he, he started to think about this, and he was much influenced by a particularly terrible uh, theatre fire that took place in Vienna in 1881 at the Ring Theatre in Vienna when several hundred people lost their lives. And this, in, a, in many ways, was a watershed moment. And they put another two lists in downstage, um, uh, 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 sort of downstage of the hydraulic list, to create six. Had um, Harris perhaps lived into the 20th century, I feel quite sure that in fact they may have gone on to do other things because there were draft, uh, only draft design ideas for the idea of having six lifts at Drury Lane on top of which would have been a revolve which could be dismantled and so the whole thing could have been sunk into the stage on revolve using six lifts, that would have been quite something. It's an idea that they'd taken from the, um, the, the Munich Opera House. And so um, in, in the 1930s Coward used uh, these two new lifts and then as the uh, time progressed the scenography and the ideas of creative theatre changed and the machinery went to sleep um, for quite a long while and um, it wasn't really used on a regular basis at all. Certainly when I met George Sinclair here uh, in, in the 70s, um, he hadn't used them for a very long while, though he was confident that they could be, um, they, they, they could be brought back to life. Well, years passed on and when Lord of the Rings came here, um, um, about, I don't know, 12 years ago or something like that. Roger Fox, who I know is with us today, was involved with Dorothea, the engineering company, in actually bringing the uh, hydraulic lifts back to life uh, for a demonstration of purposes. So they were actually proved at that time. And as you'll see, my goodness me, Victorian engineering, it's a little bit like the Jules Verne films of the time. It's, it's absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, and very, very evocative. So when we had the opportunity to say, okay, we, we, we're going to move on, but we're going to do some really diligent recording here. We've <coughs> undertaken a, a, an extensive digital scan of the whole substage of the machinery and the story that it tells of the evolution of stage equipment. We've photographed it. We've done a, 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 a film that we've, we've made of this. And this will all become part of the archive and part of the story 
what Simon's identified this morning, which is that theatre changes, it evolves, it responds. And that's exactly what's happening now. It's growing and just moving on to the next phase of its life. The equipment, as of Monday, will start to um, look at some of the dismantling and the further recording, and it'll carefully go into storage. We're taking some of the lists, and they're going into containers, and they're going to go away from here. And then, ultimately, we're hopefully that we're going to be able to find another site. But today's about the celebration of seeing the machinery actually working, to let you all see it. Um, so I'm going to talk for just about three hours more before... No. <laughs> um, but no, we, 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 we're going we're gonna to give you a little show in a moment. But before I do that, I've just got a few housekeeping things that I, that I just want to explain. First of all, um, it's a stage. Um, and so please be careful when we take you up onto the stage and under the stage. Uh, there are lots of trip hazards. Um, there are little gaps in, in, in poles in the stage as well. Um, if anybody has got um, heels on, it'll be particularly difficult under the stage because it's, a, it's an open mesh floor. So just think about these things when you're going. We're going to ask you to um, go up onto the stage in groups of about 10 uh, or 12 at a time because uh, we've got to obviously manage the process as we go. So there'll be an opportunity after we've done the, the, the first demonstration for you to mingle uh, and talk a bit and then we'll, we'll progress you through and take you on a circuitous route which will then bring you back into the auditorium to join us for a final um, little drink before um, we all disperse after lunch. So that's the, that's the plan that we've got. Um, please be just um, aware of all these issues while you're up on the stage itself. Okay. So, well, without any more ado, I think it's probably time to let um, the stage crew... Going back down to its dead at stage level. 